So Riley, good to see you again. I'm back. How have you been? Oh God. Well, I'm pretty good, I guess. My my foot hurts all the time. I think I'm getting old, and I think my body's shutting down. I've been on this diet of canned food because I live right by a. I don't live by a big grocery store or anything. I kind of just live by a bodega, a little corner shop, and they all they only have canned food. Mm. So uh, I think my body is rejecting all of it, and I'm not getting any nutrients, but I'll still make the gigs on time. Don't you worry, viewing audience. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah dude. fair enough, fair enough, uh, I okay, guess. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, so before we get into the record then, I'd, I'd like to go back um, kind of to, to the last time we spoke, because since then, Obviously, you have to start writing a new record, or, or you're thinking about writing a new record. What kind of mind space were you once touring had ended for the previous one? Oh man, it felt like my time had run out. How come? Not like I was going to die. Well, maybe I could have died. I did a lot of drugs. But no, I wasn't going to die or anything, but I just kind of was tapped out of ideas. I don't want to say writer's block. It's so dumb and pretend it's like, my writer's block. Like, fuck, I don't know. You're not a smart person. Musicians are generally not smart. They're stupid people, myself included. You're just not that smart and you can't think of good fucking shit, you know? <laughs> so I couldn't think of good shit that didn't fucking suck entirely for a long time. And I got home, kind of sat around, was pretty miserable, pretty down on myself. Pretty gloomy winters in Chicago with where I come from, where I pay rent, where my landlord knocks on my door and says, hey, pay the rent. And I say, hey, I ain't got it. So a lot of that in my mind, not making money, not playing gigs, because I just played all the fucking gigs I could have played. Mm. But then, inspiration struck. <laughs> not really, actually. Inspiration <laughs> didn't really come out anywhere, man. This record took so long to make. It was like, <laughs> I thought my brain was melting. Um, no psychotic breakdowns, but not a really happy place, you mm. know. Kind of just drinking a lot and... How come? Was it because... Oh, yeah, this uh, is the juicy stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah. Because, well, I've, I've read about this a little bit, about uh, having a kind of a, a depressed period uh, oh, for man, a while. Oh, man, so depressed, yeah. But what was it? Because I remember our first conversation, we talked about, uh, you talked about kind of playing all over and not having anything to show for it. So is it, is it to do with that? Or uh, well, where did that come from? Oh, man, that... Yeah, that sounds like me at one point in time. That's pretty... Yeah, it's like... I have a lot to show for. I have a lot of great friends. Mm. I get to travel a lot. It's better than mixing cement for a living <laughs> or, you know, I don't know, being a guy who picks up dog shit outside of a park, right. you know. I'm, I'd do that, I guess. That seems chill. If you can listen to headphones or something, it wouldn't be that bad. But uh, in general, I'm pretty, I feel really lucky. I feel a lot of gratitude towards the world, but I think just, I don't know, my brain doesn't work like the others. and mm. My brain just isn't always active to be happy, you know, and I don't have, I don't really have a switch that can turn the, the joy on, you know, so I think that always kind of influences the music, and when I have down periods of not being busy, that's when my brain starts to kind of fucking turn into goop, mm. you know, at first it's like a nice solid gelatin, and then it just starts to kind of fall apart, you know, and such just become, you know, goo, that gets on your shoes, and then your your mom goes, man, you fucked up your new shoes. And I'm like, man, it's fucking, it's goo, you know? It's, this is making perfect sense. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, was there a moment then, because she kind of um, alluded to it already, wh where there was a turning point, where inspiration kind of struck down? Oh, I'm still waiting for inspiration to come, you know? But I think working really hard with a really great group of friends who, mm -hmm. Helped me out a lot because we took this record took a long ass time, whereas on previous records I think we had played the songs a thousand times before going to the studio, playing them live, you know, kind of getting the getting the the whole road atlas to the songs, you know, you know all the stops and you know where all the Burger Kings are mm. on the pathway to making the tune work, you know, you know where to stop and get a piss and you know where there's a flying J where you can get a flashlight and a big old Kit Kat bar and a big old drink, you know, for 99 cents. <laughs> and uh, there was no atlas or no map on these songs at all. They were just started from scratch, you know, so we had to build a foundation of them and we had to sort of explore them as we were making them. That was frustrating. I'm not that kind of 
musician who's good at that, you know, mm -hmm. so it was a struggle. And I think, I don't know, maybe sometime last summer, summer of 2017, I seriously thought this record was, I mean, I still don't think it's that, I don't know, whatever. When, like, while I was making it, I'm just like, this is a farce, I fuck. Like I was waiting for the, the music police to come in and, or the music narcs to come in and take me away and take me to shitty musician jail for, you know, not doing well and not trying hard enough. But sometime last summer, the song sort of had a, a similar theme and sort of a, uh, they all had um, the same sort of calculated bummer depression on all of them. And there was a kind of a nice theme to it. And the musicianship on it is really great. I'm really proud of all my friends who helped me out a lot. And the recordings are awesome. See, I think sometime last summer, it started to feel like a record, you know? Mm started to feel like an omelet, whereas at first it was just like a bunch of fucked up ingredients, you know? Right. Yeah. And, well, it's interesting hearing you talk about it in this way, because, um, well, that, that your previous records have, have been uh, well received, I think. And uh, does that, because it, it seems like you put, put a lot of pressure on yourself almost, in the, in the, what you mentioned, kind of um, Thinking that it's not good enough. So, so what are you aiming for? What, what is kind of the, the bar that you set for yourself? Um, I don't know. I don't really ever have any goals, man. I just want to live. I want to be better. I want like I want my brain to work. I want to be in a good person. I don't want any war. I don't, you know. I don't know. I don't really have any goals. I I don't I don't feel like I hate calling it art or performance mm. or anything yeah. like that. Just like I'm a, you know, I should be working retail or something. I'm just kind of lucky enough to be playing music. And I, I just, I want to keep having gratitude. I want to give the earth back what it's given me, which is a lot of really great people in my life and a lot of love. I guess that's all I can ask to do, you know, just kind of give it back into the world. Um, which, which, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want to set out. I don't know. I never think of myself as somebody who sets out with a big idea. Mm. Um, I'm pretty stupid, man. You know, I don't, there's no grand theme to it all. But, but surely, I mean, to, to be able to play the guitar like you can, that requires a lot of dedication and a lot of passion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of passion for playing music. Dedication, I should have some more. I should work harder on it, I think, you know. I'm really lazy, you know. I tend to sit around and stink up my couch, you know. But So I'm trying to not be so lazy and trying to work more. Yeah, I mean, I, I love playing the guitar. Hmm. Yeah. So, so what is it about the guitar then? That kind of, does it take you away from kind of everything that's going on around? Man, guitars are just so cool. It's like the most common instrument, you know, like every fat 13-year-old, you know, <laughs> like wants to play one or does play one at one time. And some kids, you know, just like give up on it or throw it away. I gave up on it through at first. I was like, this shit is dumb. It's too mm -hmm. hard and I can't figure it out. This goes back to the theme of being lazy, mm. you know, and uh, just being a spoiled, petulant little brat, you know. And um, I just kind of picked it up again. It chose me, man. The guitar chose me. Uh, no, none of that bullshit. I think, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's the only thing I've really ever been good at or stuck with, you know. I wasn't that good at f fucking you know, flag football in high school. I was mm. just looking at guitar player magazines and stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, and it's allowed me to, I mean, I made all my friends through music. And um, so that's what I love about it. It's like all the, the community that surrounds it, you know, and it's, it's a real joy to play. And you mentioned those uh, difficult times you had early on in this record. Does playing music, just just sitting on the couch and, and grabbing your guitar or, or playing show, does that help then? Does that does it bring you a, a, a moment of happiness? Yeah, totally, man. There's moments of happiness in there. I think I kind of uh, you know, I make things pretty hard for myself. You know, there's always, I don't know. I always think I'm like, you know, the city of Chicago is trying to kill me or something. There's too much drugs. There's too much booze. It's really mm. cold. Cars are always driving fast. Yeah, there's a lot of potholes, you know. I feel like the whole city's just trying to fucking kill me all the time. So guitar kind of takes me out of that, where you know I can kind of just relax and not think about that all the time, or not think about any sort of personal crisis. But at the same time, I'm, I'm sure you, you love Chicago, right? Yeah, man, it's a cool place to be. Definitely, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's great. It's the best. I wouldn't live anywhere else. I mean, I'm, change is scary, and I was born around there, you know, so. Mm. 
I'll be there for you know all signs point to yes. And, and what is what kind of how would you describe the city? How do, how do you experience the city? Because you mentioned um, kind of being a bit lazy, but then again, I, I see Chicago as very much a, a going city where it's continually moving. Yeah, man, it's a breathing organism. You know, it smells like shit. Um, not a lot of trees. Not a lot of nature. You gotta drive outside the city. You know. There's a big old lake, I guess, that counts as nature. You could even say it's a great lake, because it is a great lake. <laughs> lake Michigan, I don't know, Lake Michigan just looks like a fucking giant piece of pavement to me, you know? I don't see, like, moving water or living organisms in it at all. It just looks like a giant fucking paved over park, you know, where grass used to be, and now mm. it's just like a Walmart's gonna get built there or something. Yeah. I don't know. It just looks like an opportunity to, like, you know, build a fucking CVS pharmacy or something to me. I don't know. The lake is just too much. It's it, it just kind of goes for everyone. Looks kind of gray, you know. I don't really feel connected to nature in that city at all. But I like cities. You know, cities are awesome. Mm. I'm not about to live in a fucking mountain. I ain't gonna make a you know record in a cab, and I'm not like that. I like cities. I like how I like how you feel like you're gonna break your leg at all times doing something stupid there. You know, I I like that there's nothing to climb. I think I take an elevator everywhere or an escalator everywhere. There's no need to go anywhere. You can get something delivered to your house at all times, at all points of night. You know, you don't have to do anything. You can just mm -hmm. kind of sit there and it'll all come to you, you know. But you got to give back what you take from it, man. You got to gotta park your car in the right place and not get a ticket. There's order. There's rules. You got to follow the rules, you know. It's not no man's land. There's a lot of rules to follow. But I'm making sense at all. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually you do, because I, I did read the bio and... Um, well, one of the things, because I, I think Chicago, the city, had an effect on, on how this album turned out, but what you just mentioned with rules, am I right in saying then, uh, on this record, you wanted structure for the songs more than on previous ones? Sorry, say that again? You, you wanted structure in, in, in the songs more than, than you Oh, had. yeah, sure. Hey, nice segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it just comes from playing music longer and shit, and just kind of not being a bullshit fucking 60s guy, you know? I kind of cringe when I think about those kind of past, well, maybe not the last, there's some cool stuff in the last one that was sort of transitional. And again, I'm sure I'll find reasons to hate the shit out of this record. I already have several. But I think, you know, just putting on a cool jacket and wearing fucking bootcut pants, I cringe when I think about that sort of shit, you know, because it's fun. I like playing those songs. I think there's some cool music, but that, that certainly wasn't me, you know. Mm. I wasn't raised in the Blarney Stone, you know. I wasn't raised on... The BBC, you know, I just, I'm, I'm from the middle of America, outside of Chicago, and I think I just kind of grew to find something that sounds like me, and, and I, I'm real proud of coming around on that, you know, and I don't, I like to be transparent on how much I hate those other fucking <laughs> records, and I, I'm, I'm glad for this sort of music, and I'm, I'm happy that people like the other records, I'm really thankful. Hmm. But shit, man, I couldn't do anything like, like that again, you know, and I'm I'm just really trying to, you know, for me at least, I just want the records to sound more like me. I don't, if nobody else likes them, well shit, I don't know, I just, for me, I needed to make something sound different, and structure was definitely a part of that. It wasn't so loose and jammy, and I guess psychedelic is what you make it, but it doesn't feel psychedelic to me, it just feels like a fucking panic attack, you know.